This is Twit. Can we talk about flying cars now? Eric Newcomer from Bloomberg spent this week at Uber's Elevate conference, and he's joining us to talk about it. Welcome back to the show, Eric. Hey, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. So you write that Uber isn't creating its own flying cars per se, but they're releasing the design plans. Tell us what that means. Yeah, so they they have five hardware partners that they're working with. Uber is just, you know, sort of setting up the requirements saying, you know, we want these to work in cities. Uh, they're bringing a bunch of partners together. So, you know, might have a battery manufacturer. They had a bunch of architecture firms present on the types of landing pads these uh, vehicles could have. So it's sort of bringing in all the pieces together because Uber wants to provide, you know, someday far in the future, you know, the ride hailing equivalent uh, for the skies. So this is ride hailing specifically. It's not, no one's going to be able to buy an uh, Uber flying car anytime soon. Right. Definitely. Well, nobody's going to be able to do either anytime soon with okay. the model. Whenever it does happen, you know, Uber hopes for commercialization, you know, at least on a small scale in 2023. The idea there would be, you know, you go to some sort of small scale airport, get in, you know, one of these flying cars and it takes you across town. But certainly, yeah, you would not own that car or flying car. And so, yeah, people make fun of calling it flying car. Either you or Brad no. Stone in one of your interviews, uh, the person you were talking to said, you know, we, we used to call cars carriageless or horseless carriages. So it's sort no. of like what it, we're talking about, what it's not. It probably will have some other name when it's coming. Is anybody talking about autonomous um, flying, whatever they are? Yes. Yeah, there's this company, Aurora, that uh, Boeing bought that's sort of fixated on that issue. Um, Uber itself, I think, has sort of understated how much it thinks autonomous is important to this. I mean, especially as you have all these vehicles close to each other, I think there's going to be sort of a significant autonomous component. And really making sort of the financial equation work is going to require autonomous over time. But I think, you know, in the beginning, the plan is a driver with four passengers, and then eventually sort of hand more and more of the responsibility over uh, to the autonomous technology. But yeah, that's really at the forefront here. And you also wrote about a, a pact that they, a research pact that they, Uber has with NASA. What can you tell us about that? Yeah, it's sort of looking at the air traffic control sort of aspects in a Dallas-Fort Worth area. And I mean, I think it's exciting. They're going to share some data and it's exciting just to see sort of NASA invested in sort of looking at what happens if you have sort of human passengers, piloted vehicles traveling, uh, you know, near an airport and how would that actually work in sort of an urban area? So it's sort of a research project to start answering the question of how, you know, the, uh, this service could sort of get integrated into the existing uh, sort of world where we have airplanes and helicopters obviously are still going to be flying around. So, so how much discussion was there of safety? I mean, this was this is an annual conference. Um, I know there was one last year at least. So uh, yeah. this is kind of a different story this year in terms of, you know, because we've had fatal accidents yeah, in the past year. The, the Uber fatality was certainly sort of in the back of everybody's mind and came up, uh, you know, after the federal uh, aviation, uh, the FAA sort of administrator spoke um, and safety <laughs> seemed to be every other word, you know, and that's certainly their mandate. And they're the ones that are going to have to regulate this down the road. And uh, Dan Elwell, as well, the uh, administrator spoke afterwards and, uh, you know, said that, you know, definitely acknowledged that that accident was tragic and said, you know, given how people worried people are about air travel, they'd be even sort of more worried than they were about sort of an on the ground accident because we have way more accidents in cars than we do have than we have an airplane. So the standards for safety in the sky are just so much higher. And he emphasized that, you know, uh, the FAA isn't willing to abandon sort of those tight safety standards. And so uh, this year was different, obviously, as well, because they have a new CEO, uh, Dara Khosrowshahi. And uh, I know Brad Stone from Bloomberg spoke to him. Um, was there a sense that, that that the whole company has sort of changed? Um, I know the accident has happened since then. 
And Brad asked him, you know, some people are saying that they that maybe things have been sped up because they're trying to people are trying to impress you. Um, what what is the overall um, feeling of Uber under Khosrow Shahi? Well, it's funny. I think when Dara came in, there were a lot of fears that you know he'd shut down, elevate, he'd abandon sort of all these peripheral projects. And I think he's sort of he's he sort of admittedly admitted. Uh, and he's sort of come to this realization that Uber is sort of a growth company that sort of changes how the world thinks about transportation. And so he's I, doubling down, it seems, on self-driving cars uh, and now flying cars. So while I think there was initial apprehension, uh, to some extent, it's sort of business as usual for Uber in terms of uh, continuing the course. Um, obviously, he's sort of had a friendlier relationship with governments, which is super useful uh, for Uber. And I think, you know, his personal touch has helped the company. But that's, I mean, been the stated strategy of the company for a while. You know, they've been trying uh, to get along. So I, I don't know how radical it's been. If anything, I think he came in and was convinced that Uber can't just cut costs and be, you know, the $100 billion company that it wants to be. It needs this sort of global futuristic vision. And so I think he's he's sticking to that. And so they, they also announced that they were going to start delivering food uh, with drones. What, um, <laughs> how's that gonna work? Well, I think that's really early. Um, it was interesting for a couple of reasons. So the Department of Transportation sort of allowed 10 different governments to apply with companies to test out drones. And Uber is part of San Diego's application to try out food delivery. So Dara talked a little bit about that. And so that is interesting for its own sake, the idea that they might try sort of food delivery via drone and Uber Eats is super important to Uber now. It's more than 10% of Uber's uh, gross bookings. Dara said they had the largest uh, food delivery business in the world. And so they're you know trying to think about how to expand food delivery. And then in light of Uber Elevate, the fact that the federal government is saying, okay, we're going to carve out ways to experiment with drones shows that at least under the Trump administration, there's a lot of willingness to sort of change the rules to allow for experimentation with new technologies. So you could see a similar path for manned aircraft um, in a couple of years. Well, and food by drone is one of those things that people like to make fun of as in Ready Player One. It's right. like, oh, really? Like that's, you know, we've created this amazing technology and we're going to use it to get pizza faster. Right. Um, and then Zipline, the drone company Zipline made news because they were delivering blood to places and it, you know, it was sort of, uh, oh, okay, you know, this makes sense. Maybe we really are going to change the world. Was Uber talking right. about anything like that? Uh, not that I've heard about. I mean... Yeah, certainly some of the drone delivery sort of in uh, the developing world has been one of the more compelling drone use cases. But uh, from Uber, uh, really, I haven't heard them talk a ton of, about drones before this Uber Eats experiment. So, no, I think uh, they're sort of stuck in, you know, what we might think of as sort of a trivial use case. But, I mean, everybody's eating. And so just trying to get uh, food to people quickly. Everybody's eating and everyone's getting drunk and needing to Uber home. So. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> That's the way yeah, to change the world. In some cases, but yeah. <laughs> well, Eric, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Eric Newcomer is a reporter at Bloomberg. And where's the best place for pe people to follow all your work online? Oh, you know, Eric Newcomer on Twitter is fine. That's a great place to find me. Great, thank you so much.